Due to budget cuts at the French Ministry of the Interior, the police forces are understaffed and don't have enough manpower to solve all of their criminal investigations. Welcome to French Crime. The French government entrusts citizens to solve criminal cases over the internet. French Crime is a realistic and immersive criminal investigation game. Released November 25th, 2021. Developed and published by French Crime. I, uh recently had a comment on my um, USB stick lost in the grass or found in the grass. Um, forensic challenge game I did a, a quite a while ago, and it reminded me that I had a couple of forensic games that I had in my backlog to eventually get to. So, looking through those, I uh, thought maybe I'd move on to a, a normal lost phone and so on and so forth, but then I saw French crime in the list and I just couldn't resist. Let's see what we've got. Sounds promising. A realistic and immersive criminal investigation game. I would love one of those for uh, students, provided that there is a digital forensic element. It would be potentially relevant. All right, moving forward. There are murders at murderers. There are murders at large, and crime is growing. Now is the time to restore law and order. Holy moly. Uh, I know you can't hear it because I have it turned way down, but the music was quite loud. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Willing to act, the French government is entrusting citizens to investigate crimes over the internet. Welcome to French Crime. You have a message. Become a detective. Don't mind if I do. First and last name, address, social security number, and date of birth, please. Okay. How about I beg your pardon? Let's be polite. There's no need to come hot out the gate like that. Just kidding. Sorry. I can't help teasing our new recruits. So they don't need my name, address? They don't need any of my information in order for me to participate as a an investigator for these crimes. Okay. I am Special Agent... Biasini. Hello, Biasini. Nice to meet you. Do you know what you're in for with us? I want to report my neighbor who plays Tom Jones records all night long. Nefarious criminal. Documenting crimes, gathering evidence, catching criminals. It's a criminal investigation. Sure, we'll do this one. You knocked on the right door. It's pretty clear that the uh, game dialogue here is, is uh, either translated or not originally written by people who speak English as a first language. Not that there's any grammatical or syntactical errors or anything, but you knocked on the right door is, uh, is not an English idiom. I mean, it, it's approximate to an English idiom, I suppose. I, I know what it means. It's just not one that I hear commonly. Um, we've got a new case that just came in. It's for you. Start the investigation, why don't we? A young woman was found dead yesterday morning in a swimming pool in Paris. The police quickly closed the case. Suicide. Judicial Police Investigation Group Number 3 requests a verification of the cause of death from French crime agents. So we're not just doing investigations, we're doing post-mortem analysis? That definitely seems like something that average people should do. Also, should I be paying attention to the backgrounds of these actual crime scene photos? It would be nice to know, because right now I'm mostly ignoring them, but I noticed that just now with that hand and this camera and stuff, that there's definitely information I would want to take note of. This is a preliminary investigation, and the information you provide may allow the reopening of the case. Start the investigation, then. Investigation material. Crime scene. Clues. Overview. Clues. 126. Large pool entrance. Locker key. Towel. Uh, okay, so it says 1 to 6. But there's more than 6 clues here. I'm t I, I've never... Th apparently this is the tutorial level because I, I have not done any... I just opened the game for the first time. This is how it begins. So... I'm just getting used to the interface here. 
All right, so we have crime scene photos. Additional photos down here, which are marked as clues. There's a security camera video. We can watch a video. Um, five points question. Answers in a row. Um, the bloodstains seem to have made... Oh, there's little quizzes, I guess, to help us test our conclusions. Um, evidence collected. Add the suspicious clues. Okay, we'll see what that's about. Create an account. Well, let's just save your project and it progress and appear in rankings. Should I do that before we get started? Is that what this is? Observer, create an account, play in team. Oh, yeah, this you can do teams. And what's this up here? Answer the questions. So objectives. What's this? Our contacts. So we can message people. Let's check the rankings out quick. I'm curious. Special special agent YYY with 180,000 points. Is that a lot? Is it a little? We have no way of knowing. Congratulations to YYY, Special Agent YYY, for being at the top of the leaderboard. Um, it goes all the way down to 64 pages. Oh, so everybody's on the leaderboard. So my rank is currently Observer. These are people who have earned at least some points, it seems. There's 64 pages only? What's the... There's six to a page. Wow. There's only about four or five hundred people on the leaderboard? Let me check the game on Steam quick. Is this really so... There's only 27 reviews for it. I'm not entirely sure how to check. So online co-op. So there's there's got to be usage statistics for the game. I'm not sure how to get to them. Update history, discussions, community groups. Well, I'm not going to dig too much into this right now, but I am absolutely shocked at the the apparent small number of players for this game, just based on... I mean, it looks fantastic so far. That is... That is... I, I'm, I don't know if I'm in for... Continue the investigation. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it, this, this looks great so far. It seems to have a lot of bells and whistles and and so on. I mean, this is certainly the best forensic investigation game I've seen so far, but we haven't actually played it yet. So hold on. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Oh, wait, wait. There's more in the rankings I want to look at. Globe. Oh, wait. This is just on Steam. Global rankings. Okay. Special Agent Oliver B16 has YYY beat out, and so does Asparagus. Okay. And the, okay, there we go. 5,755 pages, six to a page, except for the last page, which has two. So, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a lot more players. Teams. Spooky Rice. Seems like teams are less popular. Individual investigators are doing better than teams. I wonder what that's about. What else do we got? Let's check out a boat. Catch the killer. Is this the uh, developer team here? These five people? Or are these just supposed to be like... I don't know. Um, okay, so I have some suspect files. For the about section, I don't see a lot about... I expected to see credits or information about the developer. I, I don't don't see that. Well, French crime. Name of the game and the name of the developer, so I'm guessing that this is what they do. <clears throat> I'm curious to know if they're an actual game development studio if, or if they are uh, current or former uh, law enforcement investigators or private investigators and they decided to do this game similar to Threat Gen Red vs. Blue, being cybersecurity professionals, creating a cybersecurity game. Anyway, enough of this. Let's let's actually get into the, the, the thing here. Okay. So our question is, do the bloodstains seem to have been made by somebody exiting the pool or entering the pool? This seems to be our main objective, so we'll focus on that. Uh, the footprints, 
bloody footprints. I have the toes on the outside. So this is somebody exiting the pool. Validate. Well done. That's the right answer. Item added to the casebook. Footprints appear to indicate that people came out of the pool. I have a message. It's from Biasini again. Footprints. How did the cops miss this? Our suicide victim wasn't alone. Unless they killed themselves and then walked out of the pool. Do, 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 do. Yes, add the clues with the footprints to your investigation notebook by clicking on the plus symbol. The same goes for anything else you find that doesn't fit with the suicide hypothesis. You can use them later as evidence when you send your report to the DA. Do French people have district attorneys? Uh, that, that came out really weird. Do they have district attorneys in France? <laughs> That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know how the legal system works in France. Uh, or maybe French crime doesn't describe where the crimes are taking place. Well, no, because they said Paris. So, unless it's like Paris, Texas. Oh, geez. Maybe that's what we're working with here. French crime doesn't describe where the crimes are occurring, but how they're occurring. Clearly not suicide. Choked on a baguette. What was I talking about? I don't know. I think there's also a locker key with a number at the crime scene. I'll let you search the corresponding locker. Well, thank you, Biasini. Don't mind if I do. Hint. Uh, search the lockers. Hint. Inspect crime scene clues. Locker number two open. Okay, well, that will be on the key, so... Uh, okay, we didn't have to hit plus to add it. It seems to have done it automatically, so we won't worry about that. Uh, here is the locker key. It is number five. Um, so five. Boom. Open. Okay, locker number five. Here we have an image thereof. I cannot expand this, but we have to my eye boots, purse, jacket, perhaps, some black object of some kind on the left. I don't know. We, we need a better look. The view, locker number five. Oh, okay. So we go, go we get, and now we have a new location. Crime scene and then locker number five. Uh, we got a coat, handbag, jeans, and shoes. So the black object was a coat. The, what I thought was a coat was jeans. Identify the victim. We need her name. We have search buttons now. Well, if we want to find her name, then we will search her purse, of course. Search. Search cases. Like, cases is in, like, the containers, or... I don't know, let's see what happens. Yes, they meant the containers. Her name is Clara de... I can't read it. We have to view it. Uh, oh god. Delata? I'm going to guess. I, I did not take French in school. I only know what I know from TV and Duolingo. I know, uh, being from Wisconsin, how to pronounce Favre, as in Brett Favre, football player from my youth. And that ends in an R-E, so... Delato. That would be my guess. <laughs> Gonna get so much hate for that. Um, there we go. Plus. That's her name. Um, can we... No, we can only view closer that which we are given the opportunity to view closer. Oh, but we can go to other contents. Okay. Makeup kits... Uh, appears to be a pretty standard emergency touch-up makeup kit. This is certainly not like uh, a huge kit that you would take if you were planning on going somewhere and preparing for an event of some kind. It looks like a lot of makeup to carry for a touch-up kit, but it just seems to be a touch-up kit. I mean, I see mascaras, I see eye pencils, I see concealer. Uh, what's this? 
looks like an over-the-counter medication. Pansoral. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> we, have, <clears throat> we likely have different names for different medications. You know, like the difference between acetaminophen and paracetamol. Um, and so on. So I don't know if this is a common one to find in France, but it's not something I recognize from America. Okay, yeah, we looked at the ID card. Was there more that we could do? No. I just got back out of it. Okay. Uh, what else did we have? We have a book. Nico Tachyon uh, Toxic. Un Polar I I can't read the last one. It's the cover is it's the trees are lighter behind it. So with my view on my monitor, it's difficult to to tell what that last word is. Red bag, no maker's mark, no brand. Uh, we have a discarded wrapper here that has words on it that I can't see. Um but it might tell us, you know, what she also had with her that she opened apparently in the dressing room. Um, let's search the jeans. No, that's the phone. We don't want to switch that on yet. Uh, so, yes, here is her name. That's what we were looking for. Victim identified. Clara Delatar. May she rest in peace. View the police report. Okay, don't mind if I do. Um, Pairon Swimming Pool, 32 Rue Edouard, Pairon, Paris, investigation of death, we, Jean Dussalon, major in function at the Paris Police Department, judicial police officer in residence in Paris. You know, um, I, like most people, picked up Duolingo to try and continue my language learning efforts when I was in school, uh, in high school. I uh, picked up uh, a couple of Russian classes and I ended up taking Russian for a couple of years through high school and then into college. And uh, being from the United States, it's difficult to not pick up some Spanish. And so I, I wanted to continue learning Spanish. But I also decided to uh, start working on uh, French and German as well, you know, just See what if I could, I could pick up a couple of things here and there. I figured as a as a daily exercise, a sort of you know, mental exercise kind of a thing, and perhaps broaden my horizons. I gotta say, as much as I'm butchering French uh, in this game, I do appreciate the language. There is there is a certain elegance uh, about it. I can see. Um, well, I decided to start picking up French because Russian is heavily influenced in a lot of ways by the by French as a language. Um, because of the czarist days, you know, they uh, were quite taken with uh, Francophiles and French court and all of that. So there's many Russian words that are borrowed from from French. And of course, French's influence on English is also pretty fascinating as well. And the difference between poultry and chicken and beef and cow and pork and pig and so on, all of that being the result of French influences after the conquest of the Norman invasion, 1066. Um, in German, I decided to start learning for the same reason, because English primarily a Germanic language that was changed by the French. I thought, you know, if I learn a little bit about each language, it would only serve to be an interesting exercise. So, long story short, I, I like French, but I can't pronounce it. I'm terrible. Um, terrible at it. Um, judicial police officer in residence. <sighs> Being on duties by officers, Matthew uh, Salve and Gwen Calvin was notified at 7.20 a.m. by her dispatcher of the discovery of a corpse at the, so probably at some time during the night and then in the morning when they came to open the place up, they noticed the body. Um, arriving at the scene at 7, so 20 minutes, police arrived, contacted the caller, Mr. Jose Mendez, 42 years old, born in Lagal. Uh, residing at 30, I don't, I don't know if this is any of this is going to be important, so I'm just going to gl gloss over it for the time being, but residing in Paris as well, lifeguard at the aforementioned swimming pool, informed us that he discovered the corpse of a woman earlier that morning after unlocking the main entrance and entering the swimming area, known to Mr. Mendez, we heard in a separate police report, and I request the municipal employee 
took us to the scene of discovery, specifying that the victim's body was discovered in the main pool and was floating in the middle of the pool, legs together and arms slightly apart. At our request, the body was removed from the pool and examined by the forensic scientist who notified us, uh, who was notified as soon as we arrived. Following this exam uh, examination, Dr. Bouvier issued a death certificate mentioning a forensic impediment. A forensic impediment. Interesting. We proceeded to make the usual observations. We left the premises with our assistants to return to the police department. Who found the body? Uh, well, we just read it, so Jose Mendez. I I'm going to actually stop here for a moment. Oh, for, uh, unlocked element, person of interest. Um, well, let's find out more about our victim, if possible. Okay, I'm going to create an account quick. As long as it doesn't require sensitive information. Um... I will sign up with my email. Uh, I raise my right hand and do solemnly swear to accept the GTC, General Terms and Conditions. My criminal record is spotless. I'm not a terrorist or a murderer. I want justice for all, regardless of color, sex, religion, or whatever. Tonight, I will say to the people I love that I love them. Tonight, I will not eat meat. Oh boy, I don't know if I can affirm this uh, because I I do not ascribe to one or more of these things. I do ascribe to one or more of these things, but I will not say which. I'll leave it to you to contemplate whether or not I simply cannot refuse meat or am potentially a terrorist. But for all intents and purposes, I will check the box. I would like to receive news and updates about your investigation. Yeah, you know what? Sure. Sure, why not? Uh, username. Uh, do we allow spaces? How many characters do I have? I don't know. Seems to have accepted that. Um, if you would like to get in touch with me, uh, you can do so at uh, the email address on the channel, which is my work email address and I will create a password which will remain entirely secret from all of you maniacs it is the most secure password in the world you'll never figure it out oh that was easy I didn't have to do a validation or verification or uh, your account has been sent. Your confirmation email will be sent. Okay. But for now, I am signed in. Change my photo. Don't mind if I do. Done. Okay. <clears throat> All right. For our victim. <clears throat> All right. 31 years old. Female. French. France. Paris, address, single, no children. Okay. How many calls from an unknown number did Clara de, de Latra receive the day before her body was found in the pool? Well, we have to examine her phone to find that out. So um, I guess let's go ahead and do that. We'll, we'll follow the, follow the uh, breadcrumbs here that were being left. Um, evidence collected... Okay, let's go back to locker five. Let's go back to the handbag. Oh, no, it wasn't the handbag. It was uh, the jeans. Uh, switch this on. Ooh, we don't know the pin code. Send it to the lab. So they'll unlock it for us. Hmm. See if we can figure it out first. Let's check her coat. Uh, nope. It's more than a coat, though. There's several items there. Search the shoes. Nothing, just shoes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Search for information on her, which takes three seconds. General information. With her previous job due to an extended sick leave, so she wasn't feeling well. Professional retraining. Detective in romance novels, rock climbing cats, horror movies, combat sports, flying. Wow, she sounds... Oh, she dislikes horror movies, combat sports, and flying. Well, sorry, Clara, we cannot be friends. Uh, tenant, criminal record, none. Playlist. 
mobile phone. Uh, messages, pictures, uh, sure, messages. Ah, okay. Thought maybe there was a way around the pin thing there. Um, and these are actual artists and songs. So some kind of like Spotify deal or something. You know, the UI in this in this game is so slick. It's one of the things that investigation games is usually severely lacking in is a good UI. Um, and this so far has been just fine. The only issue that I think I might have is this case notebook. If, if I have to manually add things, I know that I'm going to notice things and, to, and make note of things and um, forget to actually add them to the case file. All right, how about Jose, our lifeguard, married, two children. Faded lion tattoo on his left shoulder. Seems weird that we would have access to his phone, but all right. Criminal record, a traffic offense. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. That's not relevant. What, did we think he hit her with his car and then dumped her in the pool? Suspected of undeclared supplementary income, private lessons. Oh, of all the things. Um, okay. His dog Lobo, his children, Marius, and Clovis. It doesn't mention his wife. Just his dog and his children. Hates green beans. Um, oh, there's a different question now. According to Jose Mendez, the police arrived on scene at uh, 7.40 a.m. What? Yes, it is. Police report. Arriving on scene, 7.40 a.m. We contacted the caller. That's what it says. According to Jose Mendez, the police are 7.40 a.m. Did they get it wrong? They got it wrong. Oh, or is there... Uh, yeah, not yet. Is there... A report from... Hold on. Maybe maybe I should have looked at his messages. Maybe it said... No. Never mind. We, we don't have access to it. Oh, we can interrogate him. Oh. That's what I should have done. That's that's how I would have gotten his... Okay, I understand. I made a mistake. I was going by the police report. I should have interrogated him to get his information and asked him when the police arrived. Um, you know, where we can access the recordings for the videotape. Due to technical issue, the video answer, this recording was lost. The camera operator forgot to press the button. At any rate, there is no recording. However, you have the transcript, which gives you... Okay. We had a big power outage a couple weeks ago. The surveillance system isn't working, and neither is the alarm. Uh, what time was it when you found it? 6.05. I had 10 minutes left to finish getting ready to open. I immediately called the police, who arrived 30 minutes later. Okay, that's where I would have gotten that. Okay. Um... Both of those are probably important. Uh, okay. And there were no further questions here about him. No. Uh, but Clara, how many calls? From, no, 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 no. Okay, that we need to get. We need to get her phone for this. So let's send it out to the lab. I guess. You can try three times before sending to the lab. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. What is her DOB? We don't know. She has her age. That's strange. Mm. 
come back to that. Was there another question here at the crime scene? Search. Oh, I thought we answered. We did answer this. Okay, I guess we're done with that then. And then for the locker, there were no questions. Police report, were there questions? No. Okay, so we are on to the autopsy then. All right. Dear letter. Slim build, light brown hair, blah, blah, blah. Smoker, healthy lung tissue. Total rigor mortis indicating that the death, indicating death more than four hours ago. Torso, head, and legs show no evidence of recent trauma. Appendectomy scar can be observed. Presence of several scars suggesting a reconstructive surgery on the left hand. Subject's forearms have two sharp, deep lacerations parallel to the upper limbs made with a sharp object. These two lacerations made equidistant from the elbows and wrists severed the basilicus mendis, med medius veins resulting in significant blood flow. Injection marks on the inside of the left elbow, which aren't noted here. So he's a smoker, a drug user, and a person who goes swimming in the middle of the night. Slight cyan uh, cyanosis at the extremities of the lower and upper limbs. Evidence of congestion incompatible with drowning. Absence of fluid in the lungs and minimal presence of liquid in the upper respiratory tract. Presence of food remains. Doesn't say what. Medical diagnosis. Subject died of cardiac arrest due to exsanguination from forearm lacerations. Blood tests show significant presence of a selective factor XA inhibitor by... Antithrombin 3, an anticoagulant. So, she wasn't a drug user, because there were no drugs in her. Somebody injected her with an anticoagulant to ensure she bled. Deep laceration on each of her caused significant hemorrhaging, leading to exsanguination of the victim. No evidence of violence on the rest of the body. Okay. What's the question? Well, blood loss. Uh, clear into letter. Received an injection of anticoagulants. Blood test showing significant presence of selective factor inhibitor. A empty thrombin 3 translation subcutaneous injection of anticoagulant. Yes, understood. I have a mess. Okay, sure. Uh, I mean... We got work to do, but fine. This is a preliminary investigation. That's all we have to go on. Make your decision based on the elements you've got and send the preliminary file to the DA. Okay, how do I do that? Do you think we should ask to reopen the case? Well, yeah. Fill in the preliminary file. You access it via the investigation menu. Don't forget to include clues that support your conclusions, such as footprints. Okay, gotcha. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second here. Uh, let's take a second look here. No, that's not what I want to do. Take a second look here at the crime scene photos. All right, so... Doesn't look like she's suffering from rigor mortis to me, but okay. Uh, also doesn't look like she's been swimming in or uh, stewing in the water for four to six hours, but... Uh, that's fine. I would prefer not to see that anyway. Um, um, I think they're they're going for exsanguination and cyanosis here of some kind, but this kind of pooling of blood under the fingernails is not typical of this kind of death. There's the reconstructive surgery scars on her left wrist. Deep laceration. Very deep. Very long. Um, this would have been made with her right hand. Let's see the injection site. Let's see the one on the... I want to see the one on the right wrist, which would have been made with the left hand. Okay, there we go. They appear to be symmetrical. I don't think that... Uh, I think the suggestion is that with her reconstructive surgery on her left hand that she may not have had the dexterity to uh, cut in so clean and neat a fashion. So I'm going to 
actually add that as an evidence item. Okay, there's no further questions here. Uh, we do still have this question for her. So I guess we're going to have to try. Um, we don't have her date of birth. Um, let's check her purse again. Uh, some kind of gum wrapper or something, candy wrapper, a ticket. There's a, there's a metro ticket, I'm not sure. There's a coupon book. In addition, not all one. What is it? And we can't look at whatever this handwritten note is. Oh, wait, her date of birth, the ID card. Uh, 1988. 22888. Uh, it's a four-digit pin, so we'll try 1988. And we'll try 2208. We did it. 2208. Nice. Well, let's check our pictures first. Um, little shot. Single, but apparently somebody in her life. Could be a friend. Doesn't look like a particularly romantic uh, picture, to be honest with you. Uh, close, but nothing that suggests uh, intimacy necessarily. I mean, she seems pretty comfortable with him, but he seems less open to her. I don't want to get too much into the forensic iconography in, uh, here because this is all staged for the game, I'm sure. Um, the background is artificially blurred. It's really throwing me off. As a matter of fact, the whole picture has some kind of strange... Look at the, look at the blurring effect here. They probably added that the, sorry, the game developers probably added that because they didn't want uh, any potential concerns with uh, people that happened to be in the background of the photo or advertisements that happened to be in the background. Like, this is clearly some store or restaurant or something. But it's really, really poor. Um, no offense. I mean, look, you can see a sharp halo here, and then they did the blurring too much over here. So part of her, it's it looks very fake um and it's really throwing me off looking at it these don't appear to be filtered actual pictures cats that's where it's at is it the same cat these look like two different cats this one looks way more floofy than this one uh dang it messages um no caller ID called you 17 times without leaving a message. And this was Tuesday, December 10th, 2023, 10.43 p.m. December 13th, 2023. Okay, so the, the night before she done died. 17 times. <laughs> Uh, if her body was on the pool, there's 17 calls on no number. Yes, we know. Um, okay, let's go to the preliminary file. What do we need for this? Select the clues you want to pass to the judge to justify your choices. Um, should we check out Jose Mendez's phone? Let's 
think perhaps we should. I really feel like he doesn't have anything to do with this. I mean, I, I don't think that going into his phone is strictly necessary. Though I do wonder if the footprints could be him. Maybe he waded into the pool uh, afterwards. Let's go back to the crime scene. We, we, we moved on to other things. It occurred to me that I haven't looked at all of these. Um, all right, so there's the pools, uh, the, the, the pool, it's the footprints. Oh, I missed something when I looked at it before. Towel and goggles. That's number two. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. One is the locker key. Not with the rest of the pool stuff. So if she set the towel down with her goggles, she would have set her locker key nearby. So this was discarded or dropped, apparently before setting her things down. Swim cap, goggles, and a towel. Footprints leading away. Pool of blood. The razor blade way over here. So the uh, the story then that they're putting together here is that she changed into her swimming gear, brought a razor blade, swim cap, gobble, goggles, a towel, and her locker key out of the locker room, prob I'm assuming here because of the trail of items, dropped her locker key, set her stuff down, sat here on the edge of the pool, slid her wrists, and then went swimming. Why bring your swim cap, goggles, and towel if you're going to kill yourself? I mean, one of those things is not like the other. I'm going to add this, I, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to convey that in the preliminary report without being able to write it. Okay, and then six is, yeah, the person totally left, so. Uh, and then we have the security camera upper floors. Yep. Wait, that's eight. Where's, oh, seven is the body. Gotcha. Yep. <sighs> So there's nothing. Share. Thirty seconds of static. I'm just being thorough and letting it play out. Okay. I really wish that I could corroborate somehow Jose's story. Um, I'm going to add, I guess, this and this as well. And this. I feel weird that there's still this here. I feel like this should have gone away after I got it correct, but apparently not. All right. Any other questions here? No. Any other questions here? No. Any other questions here? No. <sighs> Can I follow up on his statement regarding... Nope. That's it. That's it. That's it. We can't go back and ask more questions. That's strange. And we answered all the questions here. So, yeah, we're down to this. Okay. According to uh, uh, the, if you can't tell on the recording, the according to Jose Mendez, the police arrived on scene at uh, 7.20 a.m., 
uh, is a slightly brighter white than the other two. It is throwing me off. Uh, footprints appear to indicate that people came out of the pool. So, crime scene. Uh... This one. Um, the day before her body was found in the pool, Clara received 17 calls from an unknown number. Well, that we, we have. That's this. According to Jose Mendez, the police arrived on the scene at 7.20 a.m. Oh, uh, did I actually, like, flag that? I can't remember if I actually flagged that. Uh, oh, yes. They're both flagged. Uh, so, statement of Jose Mendez there. And, okay. You must select a victim. Oh. <laughs> yes, I do. Her. Cause of death. Um, Mordor. Yes. Uh, yes. Send the file. Why do I have to wait to hear a response? Why am I waiting to hear a response? Seems very... I mean, obviously in real life you'd be waiting for a response a hell of a lot longer than a, a minute and ten seconds, but I'm not sure what the... What am I supposed to be doing in the meantime? Just waiting? What's the point of this? six investigations and this one's meant to take about 30 minutes I've been doing this for 47 and a half minutes as of that statement just then apparently I am slow uh, all right uh, I have read your conclusions following the initial findings your findings have caught my full attention in order to rectify or to clarify the circumstances of the victim's death I have decided to open an investigation to determine the cause of death in accordance with article 74 of the code of criminal procedure thank you for your effective assistance with this case deputy prosecutor your score I, fi, uh, 5080 out of 9275 what did I miss Okay, I answered one question wrong. I answered all seven questions. I got all of the evidence. Preliminary file. 4,000 of 6,000. What else? I mean, I, I could have included more pictures, I guess. Uh, supporting evidence. Yeah, that's what it was. I, I just could have included more pictures, which would have been my inclination. Uh, bonus. What's a perseverance bonus? Bonus for sending a second investigation file and improve your score. Okay, well then I will. Uh, let's go back to the preliminary file and I will add the things that I otherwise would have added. So, the trace of blood, uh, the close-up of the uh, footprint, if I remember correctly. This, I would definitely be including... All, all, all of these photos, but it would, it would be with a narrative that would be like, if we follow her, her path just prior to her death, these activities don't make any sense. Um, toxicology report, I would include that because that shows that she was injected, uh, prior to insanguination or exsanguination. Note of the autopsy report, which one is this? I can't remember. Well, I would include this. Um... That one I probably would not include because we don't have any information about her actual dexterity. I just thought that it could possibly be a factor. Medical diagnosis of the autopsy report. Um, external injuries. Um, and, well, ID card. 
Yeah, most likely. But I don't think that that's necessary for this. Let's try this again. Oh, I gotta wait again now. While I'm waiting this time, check on uh, French crime. Okay. Well, I, I while I was waiting there for the uh, timer to tick down, I decided to do a little bit of research here on French crime. Let's see if I can learn a little bit more about the uh, developers. Their website uh, points to Rackame Seven, apparently a, a largely an Android developer who also did French crime detective game. Available on the Google Play Store. Um, yeah. Um, okay, I did better this time, but I'm still apparently missing supporting evidence. I got four out of five. Um, got the perseverance bonus this time. Okay. So I'm missing one thing. Hmm. What could it be? Oh, I'm not going to go back. Uh, I'm going to just be satisfied with this. Let's move on to the press release. Uh, the Palerone Pool Affair case reopened thanks to French crime. The police had originally closed the case, but Detective, a fascinating chap, well, thank you very much, provided enough evidence to convince the Deputy District Attorney to reopen the investigation. The case is being handled, handed over to the homicide team. As a result of this resounding success, the French crime program will now enter phase two. Detectives will now be assigned to solve the criminal cases. As a reminder, the French crime program aims to compensate for police of understaffing by entrusting criminal investigations to citizen detectives. Great success. Uh, as it turns out, uh, the developers do seem to be based in France, so... I will keep that uh, in mind and make sense. Um, I gotta say, I, I uh, for what appear to be primarily mobile developers, um, I, I haven't yet seen anything. Wait, news, investigation, crime, rock and roll. Okay. Uh, anyway, I, I haven't seen uh, the developers, anything else by them. Uh, they seem to be primarily invested in this game. Uh, I gotta say, after this, I, I really enjoyed this. This is an excellent game. Um, it's really fun. Um, it's simplified, obviously, uh, but it has all the right elements for a detective game, for an investigation game. It's got very little to be annoyed by in terms of the game mechanics or, or anything like that. Um, I really like this. I am definitely going to continue playing this and I'm going to do another part. So let's see what we have in store for next time. Uh, appears the next one is, ooh, significantly longer. Oh, all of these are significantly longer. It took me about 45 minutes to do the 30-minute investigation. I can expect probably two hours or more for the rest of these, because they're so, oh my god, this one takes four hours? Holy moly. Uh, bonus, the pilots, the first three investigations carried out. The first three investigations, what does that mean? And another thing about this this game is, I mean, this is kind of an ingenious design, and it's perfect for a mobile development studio because this is just a browser. This game is just a modified browser. All, all of this could easily be done with just basic HTML, CSS, JS. It, it's just a browser. Amazing. The pilots. Oh, the first... Okay, so these are their pilot investigators. The first ones they came up with, and then they released more content. So these are the older ones. Okay, I gotcha. It, it took me a second to... And again, this is just an example of like, okay, the developers are probably French. They probably primarily speak French. They obviously speak English very, very well. But just the way the, the, the phrasing is here was, was confusing to me. But I understand. Um, well, then in that case, I would like to do those first. That preliminary investigation, 
I, that hooked me. I want to do all of these. Um, but let's do let's do these first, and then we'll move on to the longer ones because this, this next one's marked at forty five minutes. Wow, excellent! I cannot wait to do the next one. Uh, but that is all I have time for today. So I will say, uh, great game so far. Do recommend not a, not a learning tool per se. Well, would I use this as a learning tool? Not for my classes because digital forensics wasn't really an emphasis. If there's an investigation that does have a digital forensic emphasis, I certainly will. Um, but in terms of maybe teaching students investigative skills, investigative processes, critical thinking, I could see using this yeah i mean in so much as i would use you know any investigative challenge puzzle you know similar to what you get from like uh subscription services like deadbolt society or something um yeah i, I, I certainly think that this falls in line with that at least um yeah well uh, again i can't wait to do the next one uh and I, I hope that you can't wait to watch it um but uh for now i'll have to say goodbye and take care and we'll see you on the next one